In the age of steam, locomotive fuels needed to burn hot enough to boil water at a fast enough rate to keep up with the demand of the cylinders. These fuels were often wood, coal, or oil, each with their own benefits and drawbacks. Other strange fuel sources were tried and tested, such as peat and sugarcane byproducts, but none might be more unusual than powering a steam locomotive with soda. No, not that kind. Most caustic chemicals are dangerous, but possess some very important characteristics that make them useful for many applications, such as treating water, textile manufacturing, and cleaning. Around 1863, it was discovered that caustic soda would produce a significant amount of heat when mixed with water, which led to a man by the name of Loftus Perkins experimenting with the idea of using this reaction to generate heat in order to power an engine. In an issue of The Engineer magazine, Perkins reported having built a steam boiler that was immersed in a bath of calcium chloride. The idea was that used steam from the boiler would be absorbed by the calcium chloride chloride, which had a much higher boiling point than water. It would react with the water, generating heat for the boiler without the solution evaporating away, thus ensuring little to no energy was being wasted. It also meant that the engine could function as a closed system, without the need for a firebox or exhaust. What it looked like and whether the boiler was actually successful at improving efficiency is unknown, but it did lead to others trying to find a way of making it work. An attempt at this was made by a Mr. Spence in 1874, where he had caustic soda flow through boiler tubes to help improve heating ability. However, his ambition was to reduce the amount of heat wasted in a normal boiler, rather than run an engine entirely on caustic soda. Again, no pictures or solid information on whether it was a success are available. The first truly successful design to run on soda was built in Germany in 1880, designed by Moritz Honigmann. Honigmann's design involved setting a boiler inside a large jacket containing sodium hydroxide, where, similar to Spencer's design, exhaust steam would flow into the soda to produce heat for the boiler. Once the soda became too diluted to react, superheated steam could be pumped into the jacket to boil the water out of the solution, leaving just the sodium hydroxide, meaning it was good to go again. An old passenger locomotive was modified and fitted with the boiler, being tested in Berlin with satisfactory results. By 1885, a handful of soda locomotives were running on several railways and tramways across Germany, including the St. Gotthard Tunnel that ran under the Alps. They were even used for a short while in the United States on the Minneapolis, Lindale, and Minnetonka Railway to carry tourists to and from the lakes of Minneapolis. Part of the line ran through the city, and there was an ever-increasing push to stop running steam locomotives in urban areas. As electric trams were still early in development and rough around the edges, the line decided to employ soda locomotives instead. Four 240 locomotives were ordered from Baldwin that used a similar design to the Honigman engines and put to work in 1886. These soda locomotives, while not powerful, did prove to have some benefits over conventional steam engines. Firstly, they were much easier to operate than a standard steam locomotive, as no fireman was needed. All the driver had to do was keep an eye on the boiler pressure while operating the engine. They also had no exhausts, making them ideal in urban environments or enclosed spaces, as they produced no soot or fumes. An added bonus of not exhausting anything was that they were effectively silent while operating, something that made them ideal in populated areas. Refueling, if you can call it that, was a tricky job, but once started, a soda locomotive could run for hours without interference. The soda itself, to an extent, was also reusable, as it could either be blasted with super hot steam to reconcentrate it, or drained from the locomotive and heated in a large vat to boil the water out of the solution. As amazing as all of this was, there were, however, many drawbacks that came from the design. Despite functioning almost the same as a steam locomotive, tests showed that soda engines only produced 60% as much steam as their coal-burning counterparts, further limiting their power was their weight. The soda used to heat the boiler added a considerable amount of additional weight to the engine 
engine, and unlike coal fire engines, this weight wouldn't decrease as the fuel was spent. Any benefits from saving fuel were also somewhat negated by the fact that a stationary boiler was required to boil water out of the soda solution once it became too diluted. A silver lining to this was that cheap, low-grade coal could be used for the stationary boilers, but in the long term, it just made more sense to use that coal to directly fuel a locomotive. Another problem with soda as a fuel, especially in a closed system, was there was no way to keep an engine running if needed. If a standard locomotive needs to keep working, more fuel and water can be provided to keep it going. Soda engines couldn't be topped up in this way, and so once the reaction started, you had a limited amount of time to operate before the engine simply ground to a halt, needing to be recharged. And the final problem was maintenance, as not only did the soda in the boiler need to be constantly replaced or boiled, but the boilers that contacted the soda and the jackets that contained it often needed replacing due to corrosion. Not to mention the fact that servicing the engines essentially meant handling sodium hydroxide, which could cause chemical burns on your skin, eyes, or any part of your body it contacted. There have luckily been no reported cases of a boiler explosion involving a soda locomotive, but you can imagine the danger they posed should the tank of hot, corrosive chemicals explode, especially in an urban environment. Minneapolis ended up banning the use of soda locomotives in 1887, stopping their operations about as quickly as they had started. The issues with electric trams were quickly being ironed out, and soon most urban tramways were electrified, rendering the benefits of soda locomotives null and void. Even in Germany, the lack of power, efficiency, and the complex maintenance left them beaten out by electric trams and traditional steam engines. You could make the argument they'd be perfect for industrial use, but given that soda locomotives required a stationary boiler to operate anyway, it'd be much safer to use a fireless locomotive that ran on compressed air or superheated water instead. In the end, soda locomotives never caught on. Maybe it was their lack of power, their impracticality, or maybe people just didn't want high-pressure engines full of caustic chemicals rolling up and down the street. Regardless, I think we can all agree that designing a locomotive which runs on sodium hydroxide is, as the kids would say, pretty based. Subscribe for more.